Um, after a few weeks of lying dormant, Trump cares back, and it's meaner than ever. The repeal of the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, is again being debated in the United States Senate. How can this happen? Obamacare, for whatever reason, favors four blue states against the rest of us. Once more, Republican senators are targeting the Affordable Care Act. This is the last best chance we will have to stop the march toward single-payer health care. Mr. President, we need you. We need the weight of your office and the strength of your voice. Senator McConnell, thank you for what you said today, but all hands on deck. Our friends on the other side, they moved heaven and earth to pass Obamacare. I'm gonna do everything I can to repeal Obamacare and replace it with something that's not good for Republicans. It's good for Americans. And Democrats, including Hawaii's two senators, are again taking a stand. To them, Healthcare is just another commodity to be bought and sold. But we all know this is not like buying a new car or a big screen TV. Senator Maisie Hirono gave this floor speech on Monday. Although we successfully defeated Trump Care in July, we face fresh assaults to deny every American's right to health care. It doesn't have to be this way. In July, so many of us were moved by Senator John McCain's impassioned plea for the Senate to return to regular order to debate how to strengthen our health care system on a bipartisan basis. Since then, Senators Lamar Alexander and Patty Murray worked to build consensus for a bill that will strengthen insurance markets and reduce out-of-pocket costs for consumers. They've done this the right way through committee hearings, bipartisan meetings, and careful deliberation. Instead of embracing and endorsing this effort, the president and the majority leader have chosen to double down on their obsession with depriving health care to millions of people across the country, now through the Graham-Cassidy bill. Let me be clear, this bill is not a compromise. It is not a new and better idea for delivering health care in this country. It's just a new version of Trump care. And I might say an even worse proposal than the one we defeated in July. The details matter. This version of Trump Care eliminates the Affordable Care Act's Medicaid expansion, and that threatens coverage for more than 110,000 Hawaii residents now receiving such coverage. And there are millions all across the country who now get health care coverage thanks to Medicare, Medicare expansion, Medicaid expansion in their states. This bill establishes a health care block grant, establishing a per capita cap on Medicaid spending that would severely limit federal funding for health care, funds that states rely upon. Republicans, including the co-sponsors of this bill, argue that this approach would provide more local control over health care. This, however, is what we in Hawaii call shibai, or BS. Local control through a block grant is just an excuse conservatives and Republicans use as a pretext to make deep cuts to programs that Americans depend upon. And you see the resort to block granting everywhere, from education to health care. A new study from the Center for Budget and Policy Priorities reveals the costs of this latest version of Trump Care firsthand. Under the proposal, Hawaii would lose $659 million in federal funding for Medicaid over 10 years, part of some $80 billion in cuts across the country. This is a lot of money for Hawaii to lose, money that is being put to great use across our state. Last month, I visited the Bay Clinic in Hilo on the Big Island, where the Medicaid expansion under the ACA excuse me, ACA, has improved health outcomes to poor rural communities across that island. Bay Clinic is the primary health care provider to six of the ten poorest zip codes in the entire state of Hawaii, where many residents went years without health coverage. Thanks to the Affordable Care Act, 
Bay Clinic has successfully enrolled thousands more people in Medicaid and decreased the number of uninsured patients coming through their doors. Meanwhile, New York Senator Chuck Schumer, who has been able to strike a few political deals with President Donald Trump in recent weeks, went on the offensive, calling this press conference to not have hearings, to not have debate, to not have a full CBO score is legislative malpractice of the highest order. It betrays everything this republic is all about. By Schumer's side, Hawaii's other United States Senator, Brian Schatz. Last week, our country hit a milestone. The number of Americans who do not have health insurance fell to a historic low of 8.8 percent. That means 9 in 10 Americans now have health insurance. But instead of celebrating this milestone, Republicans are trying to reverse all of the progress that we've made. Their latest version of Trump care is worse than any of the other versions of these bills. It is hard to believe, but this bill is worse. It will take health care coverage from millions of people, and Americans who don't lose their coverage will still get hurt with higher premiums or insurance plans that don't cover basic things like mental health, opioid addiction, or pregnancy. I want to be really clear about what this bill does to Medicaid. It trashes Medicaid. It destroys Medicaid as we know it. And so remember the last two or three iterations of this bill, people were concerned with the fiscal impact, but remember the headlines were 18 million people lose coverage, 26 million people lose coverage, 32 million people lose coverage. We're going to vote next week not knowing how many people are going to lose coverage. Now, it shouldn't matter what side of the aisle that you sit on. We should all be able to agree that something as complicated as health care needs as much debate as we can possibly get. And that's certainly more than the 90 seconds that procedurally we have left on this bill. After all, this is one-sixth of the American economy. But for the third time this year, Republicans are going to do whatever it takes to pass a health care bill even if no one knows what's in it or what it will do, even if this bill is very clearly bad policy. And by doing this, they are letting down millions of Americans who were counting on the Senate to be the cooling saucer, to slow down and consider policy carefully. But there has been very little debate around this bill. We have not heard from doctors. We have not heard from patients or advocacy groups. We have not heard from healthcare administrators or economists, and that's because we've had no hearings. Now, just tonight, Senate Finance uh, Chairman Hatch announced that on Monday at 10 a.m., his committee will hold a hearing on the bill, and I'm hopeful that through that process, we will at least begin to understand the damage that this bill will do. But right now, here's what we know. This is actually the most extreme of all of the versions of Trump care that we've seen. And here's what it does. It eliminates everything in the ACA that was essential. Tax credits and subsidies to help people to afford their insurance. The Medicaid expansion, which is uh, very, very successful and very, very popular. And the protections that we have in place for people with pre-existing conditions. It eliminates Medicaid as we know it. This bill eliminates Medicaid as we know it. So what they did was they established block grants, which means you get a fixed amount. Each state gets a fixed amount for Medicaid. And then those Medicaid block grants disappear after 10 years. It is shocking to me that having failed to get the votes, they went further to the right with deeper cuts to Medicaid both the Medicaid expansion program and the Medicaid program as it existed before the Affordable Care Act, and they went ahead and said, you know, we only got to 49 votes last time, so I think what we should do is eliminate all of the subsidies, all of the patient protections, all of the essential health benefits, and all of the Medicaid expansion, and let's take Medicaid as it exists and eviscerate it. The latest version of Trump Care will take health coverage away from tens of millions of people. When I was diagnosed with kidney cancer, I had insurance. 
Instead of worrying about how to pay for my treatment, I could focus on fighting my illness. No one facing cancer, heart disease, diabetes, or any other chronic or life-threatening medical condition, or I should say any kind of circumstance in which they need to have access to a healthcare provider, should have to worry about whether they can afford the care that might one day save their lives. Not in the richest country in the world. Not where healthcare should be a right, not a privilege. Madam President, I yield the floor.